everybody, AJ Rizek here, and today we've got another Linux OS. Today we're looking at Chromixium OS. Now, if you're not familiar with this one, that's all right. I didn't hear about it till a few weeks ago myself. And let me drag over Chromium here, and this is right from their homepage under the the about uh, category it says Chromixium is a project to recreate the functionality look and feel of Google Chrome S on a conventional GNU slash Linux based system and coming down here to let's look at the technical specifications it's 32 bit Ubuntu 1404 base and there is not a 64 bit you got to go with 32 bit um, so for me that was kind of eh, because uh, at least for me the way that I work uh, being limited to less than four gigabytes of RAM uh, that will cause me issues with the way I do my workflow um, but anyway let's kinda continue on with the tech stuff here uh, uses the uh, long-term support kernel 313 uh, chromium web browser Pepper Flash plugin, Open Box Window Manager, Compton uh, Desktop Composition, Plank Dock, LX Panel, and Nautilus for Files. So let me get that back out of the way there. So looking here, it does look a lot like uh, Chrome OS. You know, we've got basically a bottom panel here. Uh, over on the left hand side we've got a, a chromium app launcher um, so you can launch the various uh, uh, chrome apps and then we've got quick launches for chromium to go to gmail for youtube for your google drive and then for our nautilus files right here we've got our running applications over on this side we've got our time slash uh, date slash calendar which you know one issue I've I run into is that with it being all over all the way over to the left it kind of bleeds over onto my secondary monitor now it could be that if you're not running two monitors it won't do that I'm not sure um, but I kinda for, for doing these uh, videos I kinda need to run the two monitors but anyway, so we got that right there. Right here, we've got our volume control, and then right here, our power slash shutdown slash logout, all that kind of stuff. And then our um, basically, this is our tray right over here. So all your tray icons would pop up there. Like there's the internet one, one for Chromium, uh, and then that's the one for simple screen recorder, which is what I'm using for my screen recording. And other than that, that is it for the desktop. It's nice. I do like the fact that it's nice, clean. Um, you know, you don't have all these multiple panels and docks and all that kind of stuff running. Uh, it's very simple. If you need to access, um, you know, your regular installed applications, the non, the non Chromium apps, you're going to right click on your desktop. And then you got your you know your standard uh, change wallpaper. We've got a control panel. Uh, we've got a run command right there, and then our application list here. So you click on that, and then you've got your settings, and then your various uh, applications that are installed on your system. And pre-installed, it's really sparse on the on on what applications are installed. I mean, basically. Uh, well, let's just kind of let's go ahead and look at what we've got here. Um, got the basics, you know, calculator, your file manager, fi a file search, image viewer. Uh, we've got a screenshot tool. Got our terminal, and we've got our text editor. Uh, down in graphics, once again, they list the image viewer and then our uh, scanning tool. Uh, under internet, we've got a BitTorrent client. And then the Chrome App Launcher, Chromium Web Browser. Uh, there's the the quick link to Gmail, into our Google Drive, sign in for Google account. So base, and then oh, and then this here is just a quick link to the Ubuntu Apps Directory, because Ubuntu Software Center is not installed here. And uh, while some may may wonder about that, I'm going to say might as well because that application is a pain in the butt. 
Uh, they have installed uh, Synaptic for installing software, so you don't have to do it all via the terminal. You do have Synaptic Package Manager, which is uh, it's great for installing software, running your updates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, under Multimedia, Brazero uh, was installed for CD DVD burning. Uh, I installed the uh, the GVC View and a simple screen recorder and VLC uh, just for doing this video um, but they did have parole media player installed we've got pulse audio volume control there uh, coming down to other uh, quick link to Google Hangouts and the sunrise calendar and then under system we've got our backup and restore settings GW package manager Gparted printer settings of course, there's our terminal again, uh, Synaptic Package Manager, we already talked about that. A little system information and a task manager. Um, and then let's take a look at our control panel here. And we've got, you know, most of the basic stuff's there. Changing the theme, our theme changer for uh, open box. And then down here is... Uh, they call it window manager settings, but this would be your uh, open box settings. And then your usual stuff, you know, time and date, software drivers, uh, the app directory, all that kind of stuff. So after the first time that you've logged into uh, Google Chrome, uh, it syncs up basically the entire desktop with Chrome. So if you come over here to the app launcher, you can see you know, all of your Chrome apps will show up here. Um, I know on this desktop they're calling them Chromium apps, but I mean, come on, we all know that they're coming from the Chrome store, so I mean, let's not joke about what they really are. Um, but anyway, so all of your all of your Chrome apps will show up right here. Um, I've got a few oddball ones on here that most people probably wouldn't use, just because you know, like Mailchimp. I use that for um, uh, uh, the newsletters for my blog, um, and you know probably not everybody's running Color Picker on there. Hangout, you know, a lot of people are going to use use Google Hangout, so that one makes sense. Same with YouTube, Kindle Cloud Reader, Evernote. Those are some of your more common ones. Now, if you want to go and add more uh, web apps, you can the there's two routes. One, you can go and click here on the web store, and Chromium will go to the web store, and then, you know, boom, you just go through the web store like normal. You can also, like, let's say you are going to use Google Docs, so you could just do a search for Docs right there. Come down here and see Google Docs, add to Chromium, boom, add it right there. I personally do not use Google Docs. Um, you know, I've 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 tried them recently, and um, just for my purposes, they they really don't work out well for me. Now, if you are someone that needs to do real time collaboration on, say, documents, uh, spreadsheets, that sort of thing, it is an excellent application for that. What I have found, though, is that uh, for me, the um, the uh, the writing application is what I would use the most, and feature-wise, it's it, it just lacks the features that I need for doing the writing. But for most people, I don't think that they'd run into that. Uh, you know, if you're just using it for uh, writing letters and you know even even like a high school or college term paper it is probably good enough um, for the guy that's writing novels magazine articles um, it's uh, the editing functions and whatnot just does not cut it but um, you know Google Docs has been on a continuous path of improving and upgrading ever since it came online so you know who knows in a few years you know Maybe it will have all the features that I need, but at least for me right now, it, it just doesn't cut it. So as far as how everything works, everything has worked right out of the box. I have not had any problems. Nothing has crashed. Um, you know, no real issues there. I updated 
and installed software through Synaptic Package Manager. Everything worked there. The only real issue that uh, that I'm having is there seems to be a bit of a lag in the system. Now, let me right click to the desktop here. Come down, click Applications. One, two, three, four. Roughly four to five seconds for the menu to pop up. And let's pick a application. Let's uh, I don't know VLC one two. Oh, that's not bad on VL uh, for that to pop open, and and I don't know. It seems to be hit or miss on what lags. I mean, clicking there, it's taking a while for that to open, and there we go. And um, one two three. No, oh, that's not too bad for opening. So I don't know. Maybe it's just the. Uh, uh, opening up the menu, maybe that's the only place with the lag. I don't know. I saw a little bit of a lag down here on the Chrome App Launcher. Click that, and there you go. So a little bit of a lag there, um, and it's, I'm not in VirtualBox. You know, I always do my uh, do my reviews on live hardware, uh, so it's not a VirtualBox issue. I don't know. Maybe if I was running this on an SSD, there wouldn't be as much lag. I don't know. Um, because this is a, I think what a hundred gigabyte, uh, uh, was it, is it a seventy? I think it's a seventy-two hundred RPM drive. So, I mean, it's as far as a standard hard drive goes, it's a fairly quick hard drive. So I wouldn't think that, uh, you know, that's the issue. Um, but, you know, like I said, I just kind of wanted to point that out as the one issue that I've found so far. Um, oh, now I will say I really like. The, the look of the desktop the wallpapers are awesome that they got here and um, there's not a huge number of them but let me go you can see what we got here and something I really like is that um, if you're running this on a multi monitor setup uh, you do have the option if you come down here you see full you got the options of full screen screen one screens two so if you're running multiple monitors you can have a different wallpaper for each uh, for each monitor and like I said not a huge number of wallpapers but there's a decent amount and they're really nice looking uh, uh, let's go and we'll we'll apply that one there hey, that one's kind of grainy Let's go to this one. Ah, that's why I was on full screen. Let's just go to screen one. Just trying to stretch it across both desktops. There we go. Let's go back to that one see what it looks like. Ah, that's better. Still kind of a grainy picture though. But anyway, um, like I said, not a huge number here, but a decent amount. And uh, for the most part, I like what I like the images that we got so who would this operating system be good for well I could definitely see it as it's a it's a good option for somebody who might use a Chromebook uh, let's say you've got it doesn't even have to be an older laptop but you've got a laptop and you're mainly going to use uh, you know you're mainly going to use web applications on it I could definitely see uh, throwing this on there and uh, using it as an alternative to uh, to Chrome OS. Um, you know, if you've got an older laptop or desktop, and once again, you mainly use the web applications, this would definitely work out for you. Um, you know, for me myself, since it's only th since it's 32-bit only, that limit of four gigabytes of RAM is going to be very limiting for the way that I do my work. Uh, I don't do much in the way uh, of web applications and typically like when I do my writing especially if it's say a magazine article and I'm doing research at the same time uh, you know I may have uh, LibreOffice open for doing my actual writing and I might have 15 or so tabs of, uh, of, of Chromium or Firefox open for my references and then I may have my th uh, online thesaurus open uh, or you know I've also got a, a, a desktop version but you know I'm the way I work I've got tons of documents and applications open at the same time so 
the, the 32-bit thing is going to be very limiting for the way that I work. Um, however, I know that I am not uh, def I'm definitely not the typical user. I know a lot of people that uh, a laptop is used for cruising the internet, watching YouTube videos, uh, checking email, uh, chatting, that sort of thing. In that instance, this is awesome uh, because you get all that stuff that you know uh, would go along with say Chrome OS while at the same time if there's a few desktop applications that you uh, that you may like to use you can go and throw them on here and uh, as long as you got the disk face for it boom you're ready to rock so uh, you know I guess it comes down to this is kind of a specialized operating system it's only going to be right for a certain segment of the population uh, I don't fall into it, but uh, I, I know a lot of people that do. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, definitely go and check this uh, this operating system out. I think it's well worth a look at. Uh, as always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. If you uh, are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Always love to have another subscriber. Uh, by the way, uh, just recently... Uh, past the 1,000 subscriber mark, so thank you to all the subscribers out there. Uh, really means a lot having that many subscribers. So uh, you know, I guess the next goal is uh, 2,000. Um, <laughs> anyway, once again, uh, thanks for viewing, and I will see you on the next review. Thanks a lot.